I'm doing this pattern, view A. I've already cut it out. Cutting out's pretty straightforward. I, it has a contrasting fabric, so you just have to read which one's cut out of the contrast and which is cut out of the regular. Um, and I've already done a lot of prep work. So here's my bodice front. I've already put in the dart. There's a dart right here. And I went ahead and surged, um, seam finished, the shoulders and the side seams on the front and the back. So here's my front and my back. So those parts are all done. Um, and I also interfaced everything that had to be interfaced. So this is the front neck placket and one of the two pieces has to be interfaced. The one that's interfaced is the one that's going to be um, showing the front one. And then the one that is interfaced will be sort of like the back lining for it. So this is the next piece that we're going to put in. And let me unpin it. We're going to take the one that's interfaced. That's this one, here's the interfacing. And we're going to take it to our bodice and we're going to actually stitch it. It's sort of like right sides together. So I'm going to just put right side to right side like this. And it's going to stitch around, if you can, I don't know if you can see this. The, the front actually is cut open on the center front. It actually has a little notch out of it. And this piece is going to fit into that notch. So we're just going to pin this in. And it's 5 8 inch seam allowance, so pretty straightforward. All of the pieces that are done in contrast self enclose. So you end up with um, a very finished, polished looking garment on the inside. That's why I went ahead and did the little bit of surging that I have to do, which is just the shoulder seams and the side seams. It's the only place that doesn't get a self finish. And on this, because it needs to press open on the sides, I couldn't do like a flat felt seam or a French seam or a mock French seam or something like that, because I need to be able to open up the seam and those enclose the seam. So I need a plain old straight stitched seam with a seam finish on the outer edges that I can press open on the outer edges of the seam allowance. So I'm just searching, super easy. But the thing I love about this is that the inside of the garment looks really beautiful because of how they have you finishing everything off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this on. And then on this piece, that's going to be the facing. Um, on my pattern, you can see down the center, it has these lines. I'm gonna transfer those lines to this because I'm going to actually stitch on those lines to this and open it up. I'll show you how that works. It's really cool, but it self-encloses, finishes off the front of that, so pretty. Um, the other thing I want to do with this is it shows um, trim all the way around, which I am not going to do at this time. You could add trim at any point. I just don't want to do trim. I want to just keep a nice clean um, edges to my seams and that's it for this particular garment. But I think I am going to do some sort of closure right at the neck. Um, maybe a frog type closure or maybe um, two buttons with a loop around it or something. I haven't decided, but I do want to do some sort of closure, I think. Um, and that's it. That, otherwise, I'm going to just let the fabric and the pretty stitching speak for itself. So I'm going to pin this and sew it around. I do want to say before you um, stitch this together to make sure that you do a little stay stitching around the bottom of this. Right down here, there's some stay stitch and it's just a basting stitch on the 5 8 inch line. This, um, there's going to be some trimming and some cutting and we just need to reinforce that before we stitch. And I'm actually going to start pinning and sewing down there at that spot. All right, so let me just show you. Here I am at the sewing machine, right sides together. So this lines up like this and you'll sew your 5 eighths of an inch and then you'll sink your needle here and then see how this rotates around. So your needle sunk, you rotate that, and then you sew till you get to this 5 8 inch point, sink your needle, and then you can rotate again to the next side, and you just continue to rotate it. All right, here's my 5 8 inch point, so I'm going to get close to that. Let me just straighten this out so you can see. So here's my basting line, and I've marked my little 5 8 inch mark. Sink the needle, pull out the pin, and now this actually will rotate around like that to finish stitching. I can come in right here and I can clip if I need to to make it rotate better. There's my 5 8 point. I can see my 5 8 inch line below there. Sink. 
And now I'm ready to rotate again and keep going around. I am going to go ahead and do some uh, little snip right here just because it's going to get kind of bound up if I don't. Here's the little snips that I made. And there's one under here too. Um, just to make this rotate a little more freely. So see, this will move a little easier now. And if you have to, you can actually take this out from underneath the machine and put it back under, but I'm trying to do this in one motion. I just feel like it makes it nice and smooth. So now, even though it looks a little lumpy, you can actually see how nice and smooth that stitching is. And now here's my basting line. And line this back up evenly. And we're ready to do our next 5 8 inch stitch. Sink and go back up. So here's how it looks right now from the front. This is how it looks on the back. You can see I've stitched it in a darker thread, so on the back it's a little easier to see. And I've underneath you can kind of see where I've made some clips to make it open up. This is the next piece I'm going to sew. And on the reverse side, very lightly, I've done um, the, the stitching lines, the pencil lines. So this is going to lay just on top of this exactly. So this will lay on top of this. They're lined up the same. And I'm going to just stitch down those lines and back up. And I'm also going to go to the iron and I'm going to press under this seam allowance so that when I cut this open and flip it around, this seam allowance will be ready to be tacked down to this seam allowance. This is actually all going to get pressed up like this and covered up. Now, if you don't want to do all of that nice whip stitching, which I do want to do, you could actually, when you flip it around, surge around all three layers around this outer edge if you wanted to. It's not going to be as pretty or as polished looking, but that is an option. I would highly recommend taking your few extra minutes um, and just doing a fast whip stitch by hand. So I'm going to do this little next step and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, you can barely see. Here's my pencil mark. And I'm just stitching down the pencil mark. Everything is lined up underneath. You can see how I've lined it up. And when I get to the point, I'm going to sink. I'm going to back stitch a little bit because we want it to be strong. Sink again. Now I'm going to rotate it around and take a couple stitches, back stitch, whoops, and I drew my line on so I have no problem seeing where to stitch. This is how it looks stitched and now I'm ready to actually cut down the center of my stitching to this point and you can see I'm gonna get as close as I can see my point right there so I'm gonna get as close as I can to that point and then this will be ready to be clipped through I went ahead and clipped down the center that's the wrong side here's the right side and now this facing flips around you take out my glasses so and get that reflection to the inside like this. I haven't pressed anything yet, but see how that does? That's all going to go to the inside. So this is the outside. And when I flip it around to the inside, now this comes around and I can enclose these raw edges, so, which is what I'm going to do. Just like that. It's going to be very pretty on the inside all the way around. So that's my next step. I'm actually going to finish off this facing um, and then, then I'll sew this together at the shoulder seams. Because I chose such a contrasting fabric for my contrast, um, I'm actually switching between my ivory thread and my super dark indigo thread back and forth. So currently, um, to sew this little center part, I switched to the light colored thread and then um, I'm going to whip stitch this shut with after I've done that, I'm going to come back and 
put my indigo thread on and show, sew this together at the shoulder seams because the next part is to finish the round part of the neckline um, with its little facing. So back and forth with my thread colors, which was a choice I, I made. Um, I did not want to sew this light fabric with a dark indigo thread and I really don't want to sew my shoulder seams and stuff with a really light colored thread. I would much rather have it match. All right, so I'm pressed. This is the wrong side. And now I'm pushing in this seam allowance in towards the facing. And I'm folding over my back side of my facing and then turning in my raw edge so that they meet. And now I'm going to whip stitch this down. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. So all of this is gonna get flipped in. And if I need to, like this is gonna get trimmed out. This is very thick and bulky. When I try and fold this in, you can see how that's not going to um, lay pretty. So I'm gonna do some little trimming and notching along here and finish this off. I have the front done. I'm showing you the inside. So here it is. I whip stitched it down. I did use the dark indigo thread instead of the white, the light color, because I noticed that sometimes if I missed where I took the little bite of thread, you could see a little tiny shadow of the white thread. So I, when I switched to dark, didn't have to worry about that showing through at all. So I did use dark thread to whip it down. I have sewn together my front and my back at the shoulder seam. So now it's not it's still open at the side, but there, it's together at the shoulder seam. It's completely surged um, at the seams that I'm sewing. So I'm not surging like the sleeve or the neckline or the hem because those have a different treatment. So I don't have to worry about surging those. And then I went ahead and did the sleeve. The sleeve is interesting on this because it's actually, um, it's, it's in two parts per sleeve. So you cut out four pieces to make your two sleeves. So there's a sleeve front and a sleeve back for right and left. And when you sew it together, you don't quite sew to the bottom. Can you see that? So there's a little marking on this out seam of the sleeve that tells you where to stop because we're going to be adding a little placket and hem facing to it. So that's where I ended. So I went ahead and I surged um, the piece first. So this is surged on the seam edge for underarm and for out seam of the sleeve or for the overarm of the sleeve. And I put my two sleeves together and I did mark, I always mark um, the back. So here's a pin on the back that shows that's the back of my sleeve. And you can actually tell, and this is usually the case, the back of the sleeve's a little larger. So I have my sleeves ready to go. So I'm, I'm ready. Now I'm pretty much just adding white pieces to um, dark pieces or light pieces to dark pieces. And the next one is my um, neck casing, which is right here. And I have two neck casing pieces. One is interfaced and one isn't. The interfaced one is the one that I'm going to be working with first. And we're just going to be applying this interfaced piece to the neckline all the way around. So this is going to sew on. It's going to hang off. This edge is going to hang off your 5 8 inch because we're going to actually sew the two facings together to finish that neck edge. And this is just going to sew all the way around. What I'm going to do before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and um, go do a stay stitch, a basting stitch along my 5 8 inch line along the neckline of this so that I can clip as I need to and not worry about losing any um, my fabric frame too much. This is a fairly loosely woven fabric. If you look closely, you can see lots of little frays, and so I'm, tr I'm being careful with it, but it, it's um, better um, because I'm doing a convex curve to a concave curve. Um, if I don't do my basting stitch first and do my clipping, it's likely to go ahead and just ravel right past my stitching line and cause problems. So I'm gonna do that next, and I'll pin it together, and I'll show you pinned before I sew it. All right, I've been pinned together. This is the facing. This is what it looks like on the shirt side, and you can see all the little clips I made to get it to fit nicely. And I am just, here's my basting line, and I'm just stitching back around on my basting line. Here's my machine. So I'm just going around the circle. Sewed it on. You can see um, the stitching. I, went, I switched back to my navy thread for this, my dark thread. So when I flip it up, look at how nice that looks. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back to my light thread 
and I'm going to take my other facing piece, the one that's not interfaced, and it's going to sew around this short little edge and on the, um, the inner edge of the neck. So it's similar to what we just did for the front facing, and then we will trim and clip, flip around, and then this raw edge on the back side, all of this is gonna get tucked up and this will cover it and I'll whip stitch it shut too. And then we'll have a completed neck line that's all self-enclosed and it'll be very pretty. So I'm gonna switch to my light colored thread and then um, I'll show you as I flip it and press it and get ready to do whip stitch it too. So it's gonna be whip stitched on the inside just like this. And this is the inside of the garment, but see how nice and smooth and pretty that looks? This is the outside. So I have my facing on. This is the inside. This is the outs, um, yeah, the outside, the bright side. And I was just stitched on with my light colored thread. I'm now going to come in, here's my little corner. So this is gonna flip around like this. And there's my pretty little edge. But before I do that, I'm going to trim out this corner. Always flip it and check it before you start cutting parts off in case there's something you need to fix. I'm gonna trim off so that all that extra fabric is not going to be stuck inside there. And then I'm going to nip. So I'm gonna go around my little corner or my curve, take some little nips like this. And what that allows is, see that? See how much more freely that opens so that when I do flip this, it releases that so I have a nice smooth edge. If I don't do that, See how it does, it just doesn't even want to flip around. It's too tight. It needs to be released. So I'm going to clip this entire edge, this entire curved edge. And I'm going to also, I've clipped the bl blue part to get this on, but I'm going to need to come back in and do some trimming on this too, because this is going to get tucked up on the inside when I whip stitch it. And there's a lot of fabric. You can come in and kind of cut little V notches out, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut some little V notches to make it fold in nice and smooth around it. So for a few minutes, I'm just going to be doing some trimming. I'm going to load up my um, hand sewing needle with some dark thread and whip it down. I've trimmed um, my facing at the corners and I've gone through on the wide edge of the collar and I've made notches out so that when I fold it up to um, stitch it in, it, it see how it lays nice and smooth now. Otherwise it would have had little ripples and buckles and it would have made it kind of bulky inside there. And then on this edge, I've just made nips so that when I turn it around, it releases this edge and it lays nice and smooth. So now I'm ready to enclose it. This is gonna come up. This is gonna come around and tuck up and stitch down. So here is the neckline completed. I finished off the inside so you can see this is how it looks right now. Very pretty. So that's done. And here's my sleeve, completely sewn together. So this is the sleeve. Have them both sewn together. This is a seam right here and it's open at the bottom just a little bit. And then here's the underarm seam. So the next thing to do is to get the little um, placket ends. So these, they, they're this shape and there's two different sizes. There's a short one and a long one. The short one is for the sleeve, the long one is for the side of the um, bodice. And then you sew them together. There's a little marking. I've marked it in blue. I don't know if that's going to show up or not, but I marked it in blue. And you just sew from the end to the blue. And then I pressed open. I didn't press down. I just pressed where I stitched. I didn't really press below that because I'm actually going to be sewing this to the shirt. So I prepped all of these, the two for the sleeve and the two for the side of the bodice. Those are prepped, sewn together, and this little seam part pressed open. So here they are. And then um, there's pattern piece seven and pattern piece 11, which are the hem bindings. And this one is seven. This is the one that goes on the sleeve. And you need to press up 3 eighths of an inch along one edge. That's the edge that's gonna get folded up to the inside eventually. And this is the side that's gonna get sewn on. So this is the next thing I'm going to do. I did this for number seven and number 11. 11 is for the bodice. 
hem. So here's my number 11. You see it's a lot bigger. You've got two each of those, one for the front and one for the back for the bodice, and then one for the right sleeve, one for the left sleeve for the sleeves. So here's my sleeve. Here's my um, hem bottom. And it just has you sew the two together around like this right sides together. So that's what I'm going to do next for both sleeves. After I've done this, um, I press this up and finish off that edge and then I'm ready to sew the little placket, my little um, arrow shaped pieces on. So I'm going to do um, both sleeves. I'll be back in a minute. Here's the sleeve with the band on the bottom. Before it's been folded, it'll be folded in half. So it's not gonna be this wide when I'm done. Here's the little opening right here where we're going to put our little placket. All right, so that's the sleeve on the right side. This is how it looks on the wrong side. And you can see I've pressed down the seam allowance into the band part so that when this folds up, it's all enclosed inside. So this is what the wrong side is going to look like. See how pretty that is? And then here's the sleeve. Here's that seam that's on the out seam, this seam here. There's that seam and this is, it stops a little early. And then here's the opening. So there's our sleeves. And then here's the bodice. I've already, I went ahead and sewed together the side seam. I haven't pressed it open yet. And I've attached the bands at the bottom. So this is how it looks from the right side. And I pressed down my seam allowance again. So I'm gonna go and press open my side seams and now I'm ready to start attaching our little, these little things. Okay, so the way this works is we're going to take this, this is where they're sewn together, right below that, see that opening? That opening is what's going to get sewn to the sleeve like so. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half and finish off this edge for both sleeves and the bodice. And then we're going to attach these. So the next time you see me, this will be whip stitched down and this will be completely finished on the inside along this one seam. And then the only thing that's left before putting the sleeves in, the sleeve, putting the sleeve in is the very last thing we're going to do. Um, we're going to go ahead and put our little side packets on the shirt and on our sleeve, and then we'll put the sleeve in. So we're in the home stretch. I'm pinning my little placket piece onto the sleeve. And in order to do that, you have to clip the sleeve right below, right where you stop stitching. So right where the opening begins. So I'm gonna show you on this one. I haven't clipped it yet. On this one, this is where I stop stitching. I'm going to actually clip through right here. So right where I stop, that's where we clip through. That's what the circle on your pattern piece shows. So on this one, I have clipped through, all right? And then you take your little placket piece and you pin, see this, this circle lines up with where we've um, clipped through. We're going to match up that. So we're going to take the um, seam allowance, match seam allowance to seam allowance, and we're doing right side of placket to the wrong side of the, the sleeve, which will make sense when we flip it around because this whole placket's gonna flip around to the right side and finish this off. And then you're gonna fold up the edge so the edges meet. It's about 5 eighths of an inch um, on each end. So now I'm just going to straight stitch just this side and then I'm gonna come over and straight stitch this side so they're not it's not like a continuous loop. We're just doing two independent seams and then this whole thing will flip around to the other side. Here's a little close-up of the placket. So I have sewn together right side placket to wrong side sleeve and now I've flipped it around so I'm on the right side of my sleeve. This is what the finished edge looks like. And you can see I've turned this up. This is what it looks like on the bottom. I'm going to actually whip stitch that all shut so you don't see it this edge is going to get turned under and stitched down all the way up. I'm going to trim off this extra seam. Those little ears are going to get trimmed off and that's going to get um, turned down and stitched, turned under and stitched. Now on the wrong side of this sleeve where I notched it, this is what I want to show you. So this is where I took the little clip so I could open it up. See that? 
But on the inside, see this is the only part that's not completely finished off, this little thing. So I'm going to press this open and I'm going to hand stitch that down on the inside of the sleeve to make sure I don't have any fraying issues with that. And that's going to be for both sleeves and the inside of the garment at the side seam because this is the exact same treatment. This placket treatment will be the same for both sleeves and the sides of the garment. Here's the placket pinned down ready to be stitched. If you're applying trim, of course you would have applied this trim first so it would go underneath and then applying the trim over this. You could actually lay the trim down zigzag and probably do it all at once or even top stitch this and then put the trim on top because your stitching would get covered by the trim. But because I'm not using trim, I could still top stitch this if I wanted to, but I don't. I'm going to hand whip stitch it to make it as hidden as possible and that includes this little part down here to enclose all of this. So this sleeve is ready to be stitched all the way around. Um, this is the outside and then on the inside um, this is how it looks and there will just be some little stitches, some little hand stitches that are going to show through and that's it. Here are my sleeves finished except for the little, so this right here I need to finish. That little tiny snippet right there but otherwise the sleeve is completely done and pressed and ready to go. Aren't they pretty? So now I'm going to do the same thing to this. I'm going to come in and make that snip, put right side facing to wrong side shirt, and do the two long stitches and flip it around. Here's my side placket put in, and hand stitched. And I just want to show you what it looks like on the back. I did stitch it with light thread, so on the back you can kind of see just a little bit of picking, but it's pretty. I don't mind it at all, I think it looks fine. And then I just need to come back again and finish these little bits. All right, here is how I finished off that little raw edge on the seam allowance just down here. It's not exactly pretty. It's the least pretty thing about how I finished off everything is this one little edge. And I think I'm gonna still come back and use some like stop fray. Um, along this too just to make sure that it doesn't pull apart because this is so loosely woven. This is the inside of my sleeve so here you can see the stitching for the facing on the inside and then I've just, I didn't stitch down the whole seam allowance. I just stitched down this little part but I stitched it flat so it's stitched um, to the inside and I just caught one layer. You can see the outside you will never know. It didn't go all the way through. I just barely caught the blue layer to blue layer. So I did that on the sleeve and both side seams. I'm all finished. I have the sleeves in. It's very cute. I really like it. Um, to me, let me just step back a little bit so you can see if it's fine. I always struggle with this, and this is a personal thing. It's always too big in the back. So see if I just pull that in a little bit in the back. It just looks like it fits better than if it's just hanging, um, which is just a normal thing for me because I'm just smaller in the center of my back and I may do something in there, may not. Um, it definitely needs something underneath. It's low um, on me anyway it is, but the sleeve is super cute. Look at how cute the sides are. Isn't that cute? really like it. I can see wearing this for a good free season. I can wear this um, fall, winter, and spring. It's a cotton, so it breathes nicely, and I can see throwing like a turtleneck under this, and it'll be really cute for the winter. So, cute little top. <laughs>